Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Powerful and Positive People Podcast, episode number four. You're tuning in with Coach Mark, Coach Mark the Spark, along with our special guest today, Carly Van Meter. And our whole goal with this podcast is to inspire others that are like-minded, that might be going through a struggle in their life, but however, you're going to see how someone else has gone possibly through the same thing and how they came out on the other side being even more powerful and positive because of that challenge. That challenge made them stronger. That obstacle gave them an opportunity to improve themselves. So welcome to the show. This is Carly Van Meter. Welcome to the show. How are you, ma'am? I am good, sir. How it's are you? good to have you here. Fantastic. What grade are you in, Carly? I'm in ninth grade. Ninth grade. What school? Uh, Washington Township. Washington Township. You know you don't have to say Washington Township, you can say Township. We're very fortunate that way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everyone hates that because people have to say Williamstown or Glassboro yeah. Township. But we just get to say Township, which makes us pretty cool. But that's as far as we go when it comes to being cool. But um, now, uh, outside of the martial arts, are you doing any other activities? Uh, no, not really. I wanted to join basketball, though. Yeah. Hopefully. And what stopped you from wanting to join it? Uh, mom and dad, because yeah. we got obviously karate going on, and my schoolwork I gotta be focusing on, and like a lot of church activities we help out with, so. I like it, I like yeah. it. I like that you have a lot going on. You know, when there's nothing on the plate, it gives you too much time to not possibly do the right thing. So there's always two kinds of pressures that we always talk about. It's the one pressure that's negative, right? That you're not doing the right thing, and now you have the reprimand of those things, or you have the pressure of trying to improve yourself, and you have the results of those amazing things. How long did you How long did you start martial arts? Three years, I believe, since 2017. 2017. I remember the first day I got my white belt. Really? It's the white belt moment. It's funny that everyone's like, oh, white belt, it's so silly. But believe it or not, everyone remembers their white belt moment in regards to like getting black belt. You know what I mean? It's like black belt, everyone thinks that's amazing. But your white belt, it's just so special. What was happening that day when you got it? I can't really remember a lot, but I remember the date was like September 30th, 2017. <laughs> Even though, like, yeah, that, I, I remember that's the good. whole date. That's really good. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember I was like so excited, and I believe it was Coach Josh that called me up, and then Frank put my belt on, and I was like ecstatic about it. Like, yes. wow, I actually did it. Yes. And like, I'm on the road to like getting my black belt, and it's like really insane that like I'm already here. Yeah. Now was it your was it your choice that you wanted to do martial arts or did mom or dad like what what struck what what made you come in the first time? Actually, one of our good childhood friends, uh, Bill Niemeyer, he did it, and I believe his little brother had a birthday party here, mm -hmm. and we came and we had like those little coupons yes. for the friends yes. and stuff, and I believe my one friend brought me and we talked about it and stuff and. I really liked it, so we signed up, and I remember my first class at Jordan Jones, actually. Yeah. She was there. She was a green belt at the time. Really? <laughs> yeah, and she introduced me to everybody, and she actually made me feel like, like I was accepted there, and like I was yes. a part of a huge family. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's funny you say about the coupon thing. It's like, yeah. that's how I got started. My one friend was like, hey, I got this coupon thing for two free classes. Go to karate class. And he was like, you want to come? I was like, sure, I'll try it out. And it was actually an embarrassing moment because you know how we do our check-in with the cards? Yeah. Well, at that school, they would have the attendance cards and the guy would read them off, you know, Carly Van Meter here, yes, sir, or us. And then all of a sudden, he doesn't see my name. He looks up at me and he's like, who are you? I go, I'm here on the coupon thing. <laughs> and everybody started to laugh. So that was my first introduction to my first love and the first class of martial arts for me. So very cool. You know, it's funny that you talked about Jordan and she was on one of the yeah. podcasts as well and how she introduced you and how that's memorable to you because you guys are both so similar since day one. Even though you were nervous since day one, you've always had such an amazing attitude. And, it, and I'm really serious about we always talk about you are responsible for the energy that you bring in the space. You make every class better when you come. Because everyone comes in the mat and you know, they give it the energy, but you go above and beyond. So like, you know, when people are counting, it's yeah. quiet. All of a sudden, you start counting <laughs> loud. Everyone starts to get jacked up because Carly's in class. And that energy and that enthusiasm, it's contagious. And that's what I, why I believe that makes you so special. You know, you're an amazing girl. And at your age, it's tough to be. It's being a female and at your age, being a teenager, to constantly have that positive and powerful energy about yourself. And there's not a class that doesn't go by that you don't bring that. And I've always appreciated that as your coach. And that's why you are one young, amazing young lady. Where is that natural? Is it natural for you? Or do you have to like put on that attitude? Like, where does that come from? 
Uh, sometimes it's like kind of both. I mean, it's, since it's a lot of stress going on from school, I mean, I, I try to stay as positive as I possibly can and like try to figure things out through the day whether I need to stay positive or like, because I do have those like negative thoughts that like just are everywhere, but I, I do try and stay as positive as I possibly can. What do you think is your biggest stressor right now for being a teen? Is it schoolwork? Ooh, yeah, probably. Kind of keep bringing that up. Is that because you're in hard classes or it's just something that's difficult for you? It's challenging for you to you know, do the schoolwork and be academically successful? Yeah, kind of. It's like I feel like I have to like push myself sometimes because sometimes I am a little lazy. But mm -hmm. I feel like I do have to push myself and then doing my homework all the time and like actually doing my work to get good grades because when I do get good grades, I feel good. And it just makes me feel like I actually did it. Like yeah. I, I can really do it. I'm proud of you. That's awesome because it's not an exciting. It's it's exciting to go to a sport. It's exciting to do something fun. Like yeah. maybe you're making YouTube videos and you're putting in a lot of work for that and trying to get better. But it's not fun doing your schoolwork. You know what I mean? That's not something that's exciting and and that's impressive that you have that kind of discipline. You still force yourself since it's something that you're not even good at either. You know, a lot of times if you're good at schoolwork, it's like or you do well in school naturally, it's like you are okay with doing the work because you know it's gonna give you that feeling that comes naturally or easy. For you, it doesn't come naturally easy, so you have to force yourself. And everybody wants that feeling, but you can't have that feeling without putting the work. So very good, kudos to you. What's your hardest subject? Um, I would say English right now. What's your elective that you're taking? Uh, my elective is ROTC and Studio Art too, because I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. You're a martial artist. Yeah. <laughs> I was listening to a really cool podcast the other day, and the guy said, he wasn't talking about martial arts, but he was like talking about how your brain, like your brain can be a, a blank canvas, and your job is to paint and create your life. Every day that you wake up, it's like a blank canvas. Yeah. And being a martial artist, you know what I mean, it's even more powerful to kind of have that vibe, you know? And that's what I believe you do. Every day you wake up, you're constantly painting your canvas. It's not easy, but you're doing it. Um, and that's the cool part about being a human being, you know, I, we talked about a quote the other day that birds literally have the ability to fly anywhere. They can go anywhere they want, but they always flock in the same spot, which is insane. But they're birds and they're dumb. You know, we're not dumb like a bird. We have the ability to move from where we are if we don't like what we're doing or if we're struggling with something, we have the ability to change it. But most people don't to where you're accepting that responsibility and you're making it happen regardless of if it's hard or easy. So, oh yeah, so you're smart, you're fierce, you're amazing, awesome smile, you're powerful and positive, but I know it's not always like that. So the big part of this show is explaining something that's kind of personal to you a little bit, that's a challenge that you went through and it was like one of your toughest challenges, but how you got through it and how it also on the other end, it actually made you better. What would you say that one challenge is? Uh. So, basically it all started honestly in third grade. So I've been bullied since third grade and it's just been horrible since then. I've had kids try to push me down the stairways. I've had kids take my lunch. It's just, it just was absolutely horrible and I believe seventh grade was one of my worst years I think I've ever had. And I think that was the year that I started to get more depressed and have more anxiety to where like now it's like I get anxiety every day about the smallest things. Right. So like I, I really believe the seventh grade was one of my biggest years, but coming here every day after like a long day of school and like kids picking on me, I feel like that it was like a safe serenity. Like I could just let everything go. And it really made me feel safe that I can come here and like just let everything go. Yeah, an outlet, kind of take that pain and kind of use it toward your game, you know, yeah. which is pretty impressive from third grade to seventh grade. That's a long time. And it doesn't really stop, right? There's it still, doesn't. like you said, you had the anxiety every day, but you are taking on the responsibility to do something about it. You know, we have a kid the other day who got punched in the face on the school bus. He's in sixth grade. And he was just like, I'm going to martial arts because he tried one class. And the next day that happened, he was just like, I'm going now. You know, whereas most people, they play the victim, they blame everybody else. To whereas, you know, you may not think at the time that you were being confident, but think about the courage it took to be like, you know what, I'm going to do something about this. Now, when you started the martial arts and when you started to face it and started to take the responsibility of owning it and coming through and making sure that it doesn't ruin your life because over 160,000 kids a day don't go to school because of fear, the fear of being bullied. 
And you know what that is? That's someone stealing your life. And nobody has the right to do that. So for ones, I'm proud of you. For one, I'm proud of you. You know, that takes a lot of guts, you know. Um, number two, what I want to ask you is, come into class. Now, do you, you say you still struggle with the anxiety, but what do you do to help that besides the martial arts? Um, I, I honestly, I, one of the student assistant counselors at my middle school, she helped me a lot with like my anxiety and she would like print stuff out to like really help me like breathing techniques and stuff to like help me calm down and honestly I'd say it really did help because when I do feel stressed and like do have anxiety like that I do like try to recite back to those pages and like take deep breaths and like calm down and try to do those techniques that she did show me and it really does help but it's the yeah. power of the breath yeah. and that's another thing that's cool is that you have to work at it it's not like oh I'm going to do one therapy session or I'm going to go to one martial arts class or I'm going to do one workout or I'm going to have one talk with somebody and it's all going to be better it's something that you have to do every single day. You know, you have to work on this brain. You have to constantly continue to talk to it in a positive way because they say that we say the same vocabulary words just about every day between like the 60 to 70,000 types of words that we constantly use and they're always on the kind of repeat cycle and they say over 80% of them are negative. So we have to condition our brain because it's already hardwired to look for what's wrong. You know, that's the way we were born as a species. So you have to think about I gotta breathe right now. I gotta think about this. I gotta treat myself this way. I gotta go to class. I gotta make sure you know I focus on what's right instead of what's wrong. Um, what is one of your biggest successes in your life right now? Honestly, making it to where I am right now is an advanced brown belt. It's just it makes me so emotional to think about how long it's taken me to get to this point and how much I've grown since my wife helped. Yeah. Honestly, you know it's so awesome. You know. One for one, you're the first prince cried on our podcast. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I don't have tissues. Man. It's all good. No, no, but you are awesome. You know, I try to make you chuckle so you stop crying because I don't have the tissues. But you can see it. You know what I mean? And so it's it's you can I can feel like your passion for it. I was doing a school talk the other day, and I was talking about the same thing about believing yourself. I started to get emotional because I went through it. You go through it. You know, this is not something that's fake and you're working through it. And that feeling of, you can, I can see it in that, that you're sad about it, but you're so passionate about your self-improvement that you're so proud of yourself. And I'm so proud of you, but everybody wants that feeling, but they don't want to go through the hard work that it takes to get there. And for you to be so brave, you know what I mean? And to continue to get better and have that courage because like we say all the time, the second leading cause of death for your age group of 24 is suicide. I was talking to a therapist the other day and she says, we are booked. It's so hard to get into a therapy session and the biggest thing that's common for kids is, in, is the anxiety, which is um, crazy. And to hear that your biggest success is your self-improvement. So you're bad on back at a girl. Now let me ask you something. If you are sitting here talking to that, now, now that you know what you know now, you're sitting here talking to the third grade you, Carly. Oof. What would you tell that third grade Carly on how to prepare for where you are right now? What advice would you give her so that this way she has an easier time getting through the things that you know she's about to get through? Uh, I would honestly say, like, you can do it. Just, just wait it out, honestly, and just everything goes by pretty quickly. And just take your time with everything and enjoy life. Well, guess what? Keep telling this Carly, who's what age? Oh, Me now, I'm 14. 14, so keep telling this Carly the same thing. Cause a lot I do of time, every day. Good, because you, you, those things that you tell your, your, third, your third grade self, you know what I mean, just hang in there, it'll pass by, keep believing in yourself, keep a positive attitude. For the rest of your life, you're going to have to continue to tell yourself that. <clears throat> and that's the reason why you are here today, being powerful and positive, which is so cool, and being so open and authentic. This right here is going to help so many girls. You know, we always say on the mat that a hero in Greek language is somebody with enough strength for two. So one, it takes a lot of courage to be a hero of yourself. But now you start to have that, that ability to have enough strength to help somebody else with it as well. Which leads me to a question for you. And my question is this. We have a program here called the Elite Leadership Team. And it's, and it's of 
of our most positive students, people that are always here, they're always in class, they're showing good attendance, they're doing the right thing on and off the mat. They are the type of people that are great role models for our third grade girl and male students. So my question for you is, you've never been asked, would you like to be on our elite leadership team? Yes, sir. Well, today is your official invite. Not too many people get to be on it. So I want to invite you to it because I'm so proud of the girl that you have become and I know what's in store for you next. And I know that type of person is going to be a phenomenal role model for all our new students that are coming in and the students that we have now. I'm super duper proud of you. Thank you for being so amazing and powerful and positive. Well, there you have it, Facebook Live, our first crier on the podcast. <laughs> tears of joy, tears of courage, tears of getting better. I'm super proud of you. Once again, this is Coach Mark Moore, Mark the Spark from Underground Martial Arts, a.k.a. The Growth Dojo, with your powerful and positive people podcast, episode number four, with the new elite leadership team warrior, Carly Van Meter. You rock, man. We are out. Way to go. Way to go. What was, what was harder, the um, being cold? Yeah, <laughs> I'm so cold. <laughs> I was trying not to shake the whole right time. Now. You are awesome. Hey, if you're on Facebook Live, thank you so much for tuning in. If you know somebody that is a teenager right now or a young lady or a young man right now that's just going through life, this is powerful and positive for them. This is going to give them